Hi everyone, we're about to start at 7 o'clock. Yeah, we want to make sure that we cover everybody and uh, you guys can grab your seat and food and drinks. I appreciate it. My name is Johan Borch. I'm the, I guess, the founder or one of the founders of uh, the TechMap and also the co-founder meetup. Uh, we started this event a couple of years ago, I guess five years in Microsoft and now we moved to Capital Factory. But uh, this is this is going to be done without you know me, my wife, and uh, all the volunteers and all the uh, sponsors and partners that we have. So we're going to go through that. Guys. And uh, the other thing is we try to make the networking kind of an incentives to actually be able to connect with others. So if you know what the red dots, the green, the blue, and the yellow are, that that way you can have a connection with somebody. So if you're, for instance, an entrepreneur and you're looking for a developer, you look at the red dot and say, "Hey, I'm looking for a developer. What are you coding?" So that makes it interactive where you can meet others and kind of connect with them as well. The next thing is, well, that's me and my wife, and they are awesome ambassadors. I guess uh, they, they were in the front helping out. Um, this is the next event we have, uh, February 8th. Uh, we have Jason Seeds from uh, TechStart. He's going to be speaking here at this event. Then we have a uh, interactive networking party that we did last year during Saba Southwest, and we're looking to do it next year. I mean, not next year, this year on February. We just haven't, uh, March, I'm sorry, we haven't actually got the location yet um, and, the, and the date. So once we get that, we'll promote it and let you guys know. It'll be a free event, free booze, free drinks, and you know, uh, food as well. So hopefully you guys can make it. Uh, we also have a small business week that we're going to be doing in May, once, 1 to 7. It's uh, something that a group of us is putting together, and I'm sure some of the guys are going to be talking about it because uh, they're one of our partners. And if you guys don't mind, get your phones and put it in vibrate or mute. Uh, and while you're doing that, go ahead and tweet about this event, uh, hashtag or at Capital Factory or at uh, the Tech Map. And pretty much this is the lineup for the next couple of months. You know, Jason Seeds, Rudy Garza, Joshua Bear, or hers. All these people are pretty much uh, entrepreneurs. They started somewhere. So we'd like to hear their stories and kind of they can share for, with us. We also have this thing called uh, VIP. So if you guys want to become a VIP, basically you pay for the whole year. Uh, you save $44 if you come every month for, you know, instead of $12. Um, and that benefits, of course, is no line. You have a RSVP VIP. Uh, Reserve seating and you get a badge. So that's the benefits. And there's a lot of things that we're building into the tech map website. We actually um, have a couple of developers that are coding a lot into it. And we want to make the next uh, Angels Go or LinkedIn for just for technology companies or technology entrepreneurs. And this is pretty much our sponsors and partners. And of course, you know, the tech map. Um, and I'm just going to bring them up up here and pretty much I'm going to talk about a little bit about what they do. So if you guys don't mind, just uh, help me out them when they come up here. Uh, first one I want to have come up here is a Small Business Week Festival. Um, Jay, uh, Sean, and Michaela. All right. Uh, I am Sean and this is Michaela. Uh, we wanted to talk to you real brief briefly about uh, an event that we are doing uh, here in May that Johan talked about, Small Business small business Festival here in Austin. Um, and to tell you a little bit more about it, I'll let Michaela tell you what it's all about. So who's heard of Small Business Week? Very few people. Well, that's about to change. So we're about to launch um, a few events around Small Business Week, which takes place at the beginning of May. Um, we're going to have a few what we call premium events and community events around Austin um, to celebrate Small Business Week in Austin. And uh, we're looking for a few things that I want Sean to talk more about. Uh, so basically, Small Business, Business Week is designated by the Small Business Association of America. And it's happening May uh, 1st through 7th, I think. Um, but they haven't really done anything with it. So um, we thought it would be a great chance to um, you know, highlight some of the great small business leaders in our community, provide workshops, and um, just really good opportunities for small business leaders. Um, and so for that event, we are looking for um, high profile speakers. So if you are or know somebody who wants to speak at one of these events, um, we're looking for that. We are looking for in-kind sponsorships, which would include space, um, would include you know food and drink, if possible. Um, 
just ways to kind of highlight the, the great companies that we have in Austin. And then also we're looking for um, paid sponsorships for the different events for name branding, um, social media, and uh, all the other ways that we can um, support and promote what small businesses um, and, and companies in Austin are doing. Um, so if, you, if that sounds interesting to you, talk to one of us. Um, and you can also email us, um, and it's just sean at smallbusinessfestival.org or Michaela at smallbusinessfestival.org. Uh, I will send that to Johan, and if you wouldn't mind, just share that out with everybody. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. It's happening uh, first week of May. And um, yeah, I guess, do you guys have any questions? We can answer any questions. Or tweet them, tweet them <laughs> at the tech map. Uh, but yeah, oh, thanks, Johan. Wonderful. No problem. So I guess, uh, how many of you remember Rice? You guys ever attended Rice? Okay, better one. You know, Rice is no longer available because they're not that good. Uh, but <laughs> South by Southwest. So I guess what they're trying to do is the same thing as South by Southwest, but for small businesses um, and that aspect. So it'd definitely be great for you guys to attend, and it's going to be not South by Southwest prices, of course. It'll be cheap, so definitely come to it. Uh, the next uh, sponsor we have uh, is Tujo Promo, which is my wife. Uh, she actually has a business that does um, shirts like this and hats and whatever promotional products. She can talk to you about that, and she gets a good deal. Um, and the next one I want to bring up is uh, Richard Rodriguez and Ski Monica. Uh, she's one of the sponsors. Thank you very much. Hey guys, good evening. My name is Monica Millionberg, and I'm a business attorney here in Austin. I'm with Richards, Rodriguez, and Skeeth, and uh, I represent uh, business owners, entrepreneurs more specifically, uh, in really all phases of the business life cycle. Um, and I'm re really happy to be here tonight on behalf of RRS supporting uh, Austin's entrepreneurial scene. And I look forward to the presentations this evening, and thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. We love sponsorships, so yeah. If anybody else wants to give us money to support our, our community, we'll love it. Um, next one is uh, JPT uh, Jam Pack. I think Tracy is going to come. Uh, Say something. Uh, thank you. Hey guys, um, I'm here tonight on behalf of Jam Pack Tech. Uh, it's basically a one stop uh, development shop, um, and we also do talent placement for um, developers as well. Um, so if you are a um, a developer who's you know looking for either um, a project to work on or uh, maybe a part-time position or even a full-time position um, certainly come talk with us uh, we, we have in-house projects as well as uh, partnerships with clients where we can get you working um, on a team that's well fitted for you um, and conversely if you you know are looking for a developer um, let us know because we're actually in the process of really building out um, our community of developers to make sure that we're really getting somebody who's going to be a, a good fit for your company um, both uh, with their technical experience as well as uh, as a cultural fit for your team. So um, if you have any questions, we do have some flyers uh, around the table, so you guys can grab some of those for more information. Um, or you can speak with Steve Meyer, he's right here in the front, um, or Lydia Sizanova, she's there in the back in the black dress. So if you guys have any more questions, you can speak with them. Thank you. And also I wanted to see if uh, my table is Madison here. I don't think she was able to make it back, but did you guys like the food? Yeah. Honestly? Yes. Okay. Well, so my table actually worked out a deal that they're going to bring the food for us almost every month just because they got great chefs, they're local chefs in Austin, and they provide the food for us and they can make it here happen. Uh, so we're trying to support that as well here. So my table, if you want to try them out, there's actually some business cards and um, some information about getting a 20% off for your ordering of food, I guess, for uh, your next meal. Um, you can get a discount over there. The next one is Capital Factory, of course. This location is provided by them. Um, it's awesome to be here downtown. Uh, if you guys park downstairs, you get $5 you pay only. You just have to ask them in the front to give you a little cart. Um, other than that, you get the great view of you know pretty much uh, the Capitol. And uh, the next person I want to bring up is holding our media, um, Alex. Hey everybody, um, so my name is Alex, I'm CEO of Golden Arm Media, and we're a video marketing company here in town and we help uh, businesses and brands amplify their message through uh, powerful video content. 
And uh, I'm really excited tonight in particular because uh, Jeff, where are you at, Jeff? Right here. Hey. Um, he's uh, presenting his startup today, and we produced a, um, an, an animated explainer video for that, um, for that project. And we're very excited to be a part of his launching platform. Um, so, yeah, I guess one thing that probably separates us, just thinking more about Jeff's project, is that we bring a level of, of true narrative strategy to your project where we don't simply show up and shoot or just do something on a template based on previous projects. We truly take the time because our passion is your passion. So we, we take the time to learn about your values, your vision, your culture, and really imbue that in the video in a way that's gonna help it resonate uh, better with your audience and get you a higher return on investment. So if anyone is interested, uh, I'll be here after the presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next person, I guess, is um, Jason from Fresh uh, Group Idea, but he's not here. Um, but it basically, he does a lot of our uh, blogging, and uh, he's a marketing guy, so definitely connect with him. And if anybody would like to be a sponsor or partner, you know, as a team on the tech map, or even percent here, definitely uh, should be able to do that. And I think my computer just froze technical problems. There we go. <laughs> Windows Surface. change. This is pretty much the presentation format, uh, five minute presentation, four minute audience and questions, and then please pick up your trash. Um, I have to put that there because seriously a lot of people leave trash, so I appreciate that. Uh, we have to get out of here at nine, so because they have the cleaning crew coming in, so we'll ask you, we'll play music, we should be finished around 8.30 for the presentations, and by nine I'll turn off the music and we have to go downstairs and party more downstairs at the actual lobby. There's a bar downstairs too, you can network more with individuals, and it can. There we go, touch screen works. Um, this is the lineup for the presenters. Uh, pretty Smart Homes is gonna be the first one, then Shimishuri, Lighthouse, Inbound Marketing, Nomad, the presenter's name, the website, pretty much what they're looking for investors. There's also a sheet uh, handout that they had in the front that if you guys wanna take it, you can, you're welcome to have one. Um, and if you'd like to present up as well, just go to the team on the tech map. This is our presenter coming up, but I need to make sure I get my stuff working. So, I think I worked on this what the way he's actually presented. So, let me go ahead and bring Kevin Coyne. He's actually the presenter for tonight. He's a keynote speaker. Uh, his background is pretty much running startups and being a pioneer in that. And I'm sure he's gonna take over and say a lot of stuff about that. Thank you, Kevin. Sorry about that. It took a little bit to get that started. Uh, so my name's Kevin Coyne. I'm the founder of Tech Ranch. Um, I like to have a really interactive style. Uh, we only have a few minutes to talk, so I'm going to try to be brief, but I want to challenge you to a couple different ideas. First, like, I, I'd really like to ask for the entrepreneurs in the room, what's driving your startup? Let's hear from a couple of different people. What's, what's the key thing that's driving you to do what you're up to? What yes. I'm interested in. What you're interested in? And I want to make money. Making money, okay, just, that's, that's a good start. I'm also interested in that. <laughs> Perfect. Saving lives and improving quality of life for people. Saving lives, improving the quality of life. Definitely close to my heart. Yes, sir. Autism. Autism. Yeah, a very specific kind of set of issues that we're up against right now. In the back, yeah. Look what I can do. Look what I can do, got it. Well, so I wanna talk about this idea of being a pioneer. Let's see if this is gonna actually work. Being, being a pioneer, um, my career has been, I, I've been uh, a pioneer through everything that I've done. And the, the key thing that I actually like to focus on right now is, you know, we live in a world that has a lot of different challenges. A lot of these challenges, people haven't discovered what is the business model behind, but I'm convinced that part of what we can do as entrepreneurs is find a business model that actually really works to solve some of the world's problems. In fact, um, I actually would like to echo in what Peter Demandis is actually saying within the next two decades, we could actually solve all the world's problems. 
it's actually kind of heady to think that, that we live in that age. And that's, that's actually part of the reason I started the Tech Ranch. So you might ask, okay, who's speaking? Well, my background is I've disrupted six different markets. I've started startups in three different countries. You can see some of the startups. Um, you know, I'm the guy that my startup sold the first $2 billion with the computer sold at Dell.com. I built that, that uh, piece of software in my living room years ago and deployed that. Uh, you know, got my face on the cover of Computer World magazine, got to work for this guy early in my career, leaving, uh, you know, leaving college and getting to work for Steve Jobs, kind of totally warped my sense of what's possible. And it's, uh, it's interesting because I really believe that we're at the, this point in our lives that we, people that are living right now in this room, can actually change the world for the better. And that's, and, and actually make it a good business. You know, do well and do good at the same time, right? That's the whole idea. And so I want to challenge you from one pioneer to another pioneer, or to pioneers, to say, you got to think like that. You got to think be like that. I want to challenge you to look beyond just building the next app to help find your friends at a bar. There's nothing wrong with helping find your friends at a bar. But, you know, I was at this one, um, I get asked to, to be a startup judge around the world. <coughs> we got to look beyond this idea of finding our friends in a bar. It's an important thing. <laughs> but it's limited because you realize out of the 20 or more teams that are doing it, you know, maybe two of them are going to win. But there's all these other business <coughs> issues out in the world. You know, maybe they, they look slightly different. There's all these other issues. They could actually, there's a business model that'll figure it out. And that's what we've been doing at TechRanch. Um, and that, that's what I actually want to challenge you to do. Now, you might be working on an app that's got social media in it or something like that, but I'm convinced even for you that actually might, you know, be building the find your friends in a bar kind of app. You can actually find a deeper soul in it. And that's what I, I'm here to advocate for. Okay, so three ideas, three ideas of how to go farther as a pioneer. You know, during my career, I've actually been, I've made money, I've created wealth, destroyed wealth, created wealth again, destroyed wealth again, tried it again, you know, pushed myself out on the skinny branches. And a lot of it is because I see guys like this doing that, and it was really inspirational to me. But there's three things I'd like to share as an idea of what you might look at to how do you, how do you transverse this path. The first one is do something worthy of your life. We've made worthy of the risk. The question is not necessarily what do you want to do or what do you want to accomplish, but what are you willing to feel pain for? What are you willing to feel pain for? You know, in my case, what happened is I had a normal startup founder history, you know, start six different co companies, you know, get them to ha half a million dollars of revenue. Two of them got two million dollars of the revenue before I handed them over to someone else and said, hey, you know, it's now okay, it's your turn to run this because I got to go start the next thing. And then I had a friend who took her own life in 2003 and it challenged me to say, I got to go beyond that, right? That's kind of the wake up moment for me. And I just want to encourage you, don't wait for that wake up moment as you're taking these risks. What are you willing to feel pain for? Part of your venture should be itch, scratching that itch. That's part of what I'd like to challenge you to do. Now in my case, after that, uh, that death happened, I said, hey, you know what? I can't get to this full list of things. You notice there's 10 different technologies in my career. I never stayed in one, one space. I didn't just do one e-commerce startup followed by the next e-commerce startup followed by the next. So I was like, okay, I gotta go this direction, then I'm gonna go that direction. The software I built that's managing uranium hexafluoride, which is important to kind of keep a tabs on, and as well as, you know, the very first internet banking application. But the the key idea is like, I can't get to that whole list, so part of my thing is now to enable y'all to actually figure out how you can actually take on all these different issues. And this was the piece of paper that I wrote down in 2005 to say, okay, here's 10 different issues I wanna take on. Now the cool thing about what's happening to the Tech Ranch and the work we've done in the seven different countries around the world is we've gone way beyond this. And the list is now you know, in, uh, in a thousand or over a thousand. So it's all about changing the world. In my case, if I had more time, I'd tell you the story about what took me to Chile in 2003 to work with the first thousand entrepreneurs. Many of those entrepreneurs are now the, um, the essentially godfathers of the Chilean entrepreneurial marketplace. <laughs> you know, as a startup a guy here in Austin, Texas, and I was like, I've got to go figure out how I can go out on the big stage. And that's what happened. And now, you know, roughly 
a thousand people were touched by that and and then those entrepreneurs have now gone off and changed that country if you actually look at what's happened to the country over the last 15 years it's pretty freaking amazing i just was part of that but i was well, something that i was going to feel pain for the idea is to go beyond just working on a salary in something that's kind of interesting what this says for those of you all in the back is this is salary this is sanity we started a job Right? You know, for me, I was the stock boy in one of the stores that you probably shopped in in the past. Got my degree, and now I got lucky because I got to work for this guy named Steve Jobs coming out of college. That was still my career. And then it turned into my entrepreneurial process. You know, when I was an entrepreneur building all these different things I've told you about, still that was just my career. The event happened, and I went off to go on my mission. The mission implies that it was absolutely no money. But the idea behind it is then to get to your calling, right? That's the key idea about what to do here. Do something that's worthy of taking a risk and something that you're willing to actually feel pain for. Next thing is go together. Now, this group of people that are going west in this photo, most people don't know the history of this photo. And, and I don't mean just this one photo, but I mean all the different people that went in Conestoga wagons to the west. And I mean going to the west as a metaphor for forging into new lands that we have never seen before, right? You know, these guys took an existential risk. None of us in this room, for the most part, maybe one person, is gonna be taking an existential risk with regards to the startups that you're starting. This group of people, what the, the story behind the, the picture is, these different families would have their different wagons and they would actually pull up to a trailhead and wait for usually up to about a week before they went west. And the, the, the worst part about it is the best part and the worst part is all the other people, they didn't know before that moment that they went west. They didn't know. So here we're about to take an existential risk, us group of people right here. And we don't know each other, but we're gonna go put it, our, our lives in other people's hands. The challenge is right now, there's a detriment happening in the startup market out in the Bay Area, which I've lived in twice during my career, and also in Austin. In the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley, part of the problem is that, you know, I'm in social media technology and you're in water technology, right? Two totally different things. But the issue at hand is you and I are at each other's throats, just trying to choke each other out. Something happened in the Bay Area as it developed in the startup market that it is, and it's a great place to start something. But on this downside is, all of a sudden, it's now, you and I aren't competitors. You're in social media, I'm in water technology, but why would we be trying to choke each other out? And that, you know, for me, I'm not against competition, but like if you have a Dell laptop and I have an HP laptop and that's what we're selling, okay, we're competing, let's go full out. But other than that, we gotta drop that. Part of the strength that's made Austin so powerful in 20 years, I started my first company here in 94. Part of what's made it so powerful is we always had each other's backs. You could call up someone else and say, hey, will you help me with this? The history of the Bay Area is the same thing. Like there's stories of the different semiconductor companies working side by side saying, you know, hey, we can't figure out this process. We can't figure out, and you know, we actually would get in the car, go over to the other place, help your competitor out. And that's actually why that part of the world did so well. Why is this important? It's important to remember that the technology capital of the world 60 years ago was Detroit. And look, look where Detroit is today. And look at some of the, the negative stuff that's happening in the Bay Area. Part of what I want to challenge you as Austinites to do is we actually need to go beyond letting that Austin, I'm going to help you, you're going to help me thing go. We actually really have to fight for it. And this part of us that might have you and I you know, up against each other because we're like full of testosterone and want to compete with each other. Okay, well, if you've got a Dell laptop, I've got an HP laptop, that makes sense. But if you're in your social tech and I'm in water tech, it doesn't make sense at all. Because this is the enemy. The enemy is getting across the venture valley of death, especially at the early stages. All of you are up against this first and foremost. And this is what we need to target. We need to continue to do this as a community. The whole idea behind it, you know, actually, one of the great things that I get to do with the, uh, the technology startups that I've worked on, you know, about doing something where it's changed the world but important stuff, as an example, is this company, the video Biosciences. Now, this is one of the most exotic examples I'll give you, give you out of what's come out of the tech branch, but a good example 
was uh, the chief scientist. There were a lot, a lot of people who said, wait, there's no way you're going to be able to 3D print skin for years. They said, you're not going to be able to 3D print skin. What they're doing is 3D printing skin. Okay, long term, what it's going to be used for is burn victims. Right now, after, after a woman has uh, breast reconstructive surgery after having cancer removed, it, they actually can reprint part of the skin uh, for, for that application. Pretty important stuff, especially if you think about long term, about all the different needs that you might have for burn victims. But the, the crazy thing about this is there are a lot of people who wouldn't give them time, the time of day. From a standpoint of a pioneer, the thing that supports entrepreneurs like this is to have a supportive community and to get rid of this bullshit we were talking about earlier about I'm gonna like take you out. Because if everyone's trying to protect themselves and say, well, I'm not gonna help this guy, even though he's not really my competitor, you know, this guy over here is like, yeah, water technology, well, I'm gonna, I wanna see him fail, right? Kind of one of the things that if you actually listen close enough in the Bay Area is actually happening right now, it's kind of weird. Then we're not gonna have companies like this take off. Now I'm quite proud of this company actually where they've gone and they just got a NIH grant, I don't know if it's been announced yet, but it's pretty exciting stuff because long term that's going to actually take care of some of us and some of our families. So the, the thought, the takeaway thought on this point is if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Pioneers want to go far. A lot of times you're not going to have financial capital at the beginning of your startup and for the longest time you're going to need to use social capital versus financial capital. That's the key thing I want to say about that. Because if we actually leverage each other much more, we can go much farther and have true pioneering startups. The third thing is look beyond. Startups, you have to know some vocational stuff to build a startup, right? You need to know a little bit about lean startup. You need to know a little bit about developing code. You need to know a few other things. But a lot of people forget that to be an entrepreneur is to be, it's, it's like an essence of being alive, right, and living. And you have to go beyond. In my case, what happened was I lost use of my right arm in 2014. Now, you know, I'm in the process of launching Tech Ranch and actually taking a couple things on. And I'm very, very active and think of myself as able to get a lot of stuff done. And then my arm is taken away. This was uh, during the period of time that actually. I was in the process of selling my house, I'd already put it on the market, and it has already been accepted. And I was actually moving the tech ranch from the little place that we were in into the much larger place that we're in now. An exceptionally hard time to lose use of your arm, right, in all the different things that are implied. I couldn't even carry two, I could not carry two and a half pounds for this arm just because of what happened. It was a martial arts accident, totally freak accident, but oh well. I was pretty down. And the thing that I actually want to say is you have to look beyond because it's important to you know, learn about lean startup and stuff like that, but you need to put yourself in a position where you actually can take on more than just, okay, well, what do I do? What, what type of interview are we doing this week, this week? And how much code do we have to write? In my case, one of the things I actually want to share from you to show you an example of looking beyond is actually a piece of poetry. Now, it's kind of silly. Some of you have heard of a place called Burning Man. Yes, a lot of high tech guys like me and y'all like to go to this. And I just randomly had this one photo that I took when I was there. And I'm actually one day really pissed off about not having the hands, not able to write emails back to all the different people I need to. And thankfully, this was offered. And part of what I want to say is it's not always about how hard you're working. A lot of people are like, well, you know, I work 16 hours a day. And I don't necessarily think that that's the essence of the people who really figure out startups you know, about comparing how many hours you worked and stuff like that. Because sometimes you actually have to be more yin, not so yang, about, about life. You have to figure out the more elegant approach forward than just fighting it. This is, uh, this is the quote. Since this is hard to read in the past, I'm just going to read it to you. I'm going to read you some roomy poetry. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected vic a visitor. Welcome and enter entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. That dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Rumi. All right, so why would I read Rumi to you? 
is because most of you, if you're going to be on the path of being an entrepreneur long enough, you're going to be trying to figure out Thursday night how you're going to pay your employees Friday morning. There's going to be that moment. It might not be that exact scenario, but in 22 years of being an entrepreneur, I can tell you that it's presented all the freaking time. And actually, you take the risk. When I moved Tech Ranch from one place to another place, when we did the work in Mexico and the work that happened in Germany, in Bavaria specifically, and you know, a couple other things, it's like each one to go to the next level, to really do something at the next level was a big challenge. And it's stuff like this, or whatever it is for you, that you really need to have. I mean, there's, there's a, everyone gets broken in this game. Some people know how to stand back up after that happens. So TechRanch, you can just read about it at TechRanch.co, um, TechRanchAustin.com. Uh, there's all sorts of programs that we have that I'd like you to know about. I'm not here to actually give you a commercial, but I'd like you to think about if you're, at, if you're on the journey, we're here to help you take the next step. Each one of you, the next step represents a new domain that you actually have to learn about and figure out how you can actually tip, tap into that different community of people and how you can actually have a bunch of people behind, behind you to cover your back. That's what it's all about. That's all I actually say about this. The other thing that I'm really proud of, and this hasn't been announced publicly, but I want to really call out um, to the people who are actually here to change the world. Tech Ranch was selected by UBI, UBI Global is the, in the top three social impact incubators in the United States. You know, it'll be announced soon, but, uh, but uh, yeah. Thank you. There's something powerful about when there's a little bit of religious zealotry in your startup, and I hope that you find that because, you know, and, and I don't mean just, I don't mean religion, I mean like finding the soul of your business and to be a pioneer. Find something that's worthy of the risk. Find something that's going to have you go beyond and go together. And then look beyond what the normal knowledge is and look for the deeper things that are actually going to carry you forward. If you'd like more information, and sometimes I get requests for a copy of this presentation, if you want to hear more about some of our programs, just send an email to start at techranch.co, and I'd be happy to entertain that. I don't know if I haven't gotten the one-minute mark yet, so if there's, uh, if there's any questions, I'll take a question or two really quick. We've got five minutes of questions, so go ahead. Oh, five minutes of questions. I didn't know. Cool. Yeah, so let me open it up for questions. Any questions for me? Yes, sir. Okay, so you mentioned something that What is a problem that you don't think gets enough attention from entrepreneurs? Really? Uh, let's, let's turn it around to you. What's important to you in the world? Um, uh, or name an issue. Uh, information. Yeah, right now, as an example, if you want to change, uh, you could actually build an education technology startup. Uh, the, one of our startups is actually based out of India and is actually right now entering the Chilean market and the Latin American market. The poorest of the poor. Um, you know, on learning even the most basic subjects. Now with a kiosk and a, you know, some training and like, you know, either some small amount of governmental support and in this case they're actually paying just a few rupees per, per uh, interaction, which gives them the dignity to actually buy that. That's actually something, there's a, there's a book called The 86% Solution that you might look at if you want to look at this type of stuff. I'm not saying you have to go work in poverty or anything like that, but one of the things that's interesting to think about that's different than the way, say, my father's generation looked at how to change the world, is uh, this book was written called The 86% Solution, saying that 14% of the world's market is like us. That's actually, you know, we're not in a growth market. The U.S. market is actually declining in population and stuff like that, right? It's at some level it, it, over the world, the affluent societies are declining. But the poor that are actually at this poverty level on taking that first step out of poverty, there's quite a large market out of it. That's the 80% part of the pyramid. So it could be something as simple as education technology. IoT is gonna change things. There's a, a bunch of different examples you can see about how even just getting light, the most basic light, in a hut in a village in the middle of you know, Sub-Saharan Africa. That being said, I would challenge you to actually, if, if we had some time right now, I'd actually challenge you to really find out what's important to you because there's a business opportunity in it. I mean, I can rattle off you. Um, since I've seen quite literally thousands of different deals, I can rattle off a bunch of different ones. It'd be like, well, I, 
I would actually say, you know, go deeper on actually what's important to you. And you can find something. And it might be something randomly you thought about as a seven-year-old. Another question or two. Oh, if y'all don't ask me questions, I'm gonna ask you questions. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no, you're one of the, you're one of the, you're one of the ranchers. I've heard from you, I'm gonna actually. I'd like to hear about your, your latest passion. Uh, my latest passion is what I'm doing. Eh? There's, it hasn't changed in 12 years. Well, it has. It's changed a lot in 12 years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's gotten more refined. That's what I'm asking. Uh, I mean, the main thing is of what's happening is that just the challenge that I'm doing is I've taken a lot of risk with my own wealth to, to say, if I really believe in this, I'm going to go even farther. And I, you know, you've, during the time that you and I have known each other, yeah, I've fallen down because I actually really believe this, right? I really believe that it's possible to take it to another level. I think it, you know, I built a bunch of different apps that kind of, like I built the very first internet banking app in the world, right? I built a, a trading system for Fidelity Investments. You're building a community. That's, that's yeah, well, happens. building a community is part of the secret about, there's no secret about it. It's actually about helping each other, right? If we can actually really presence that idea of what made Austin strong and then take it to scale across the world, something really interesting can happen. It's a challenge, but that's something Yes. Ash, if you were going to give one piece of advice to an entrepreneur seeking funding, what would it be? The main thing is get to customers as fast as possible. I built 12 different Skunk Works during my career. Skunk Works is where you, you, know, you do a disruptive result. Like you don't just do something in rental, but you do a disruptive result. Um, in my case, uh, so I have a passion, well, I have a real ability to find early adopters. I think a lot of times investors are seeing individuals that haven't figured out who their early adopters are. And a lot of times they're entrepreneurs, especially if they're on their first rodeo, right, the very first time they're in the game, they confuse early majority customers with early adopters. Early adopters are the customers that actually love you. And even though your product only works 60% of, of the time, they love you. And you know, they actually stand in line for three days so they can get one of the, you know, these, right? The first time that Steve did, you know, he did this, and then all of a sudden, even though the iPhone 1 sucked, it uh, actually they had a lot of people that actually really bought into it. Um, really focusing on identifying that early adopter thing before you go to the investor. Like if, if an entrepreneur comes to me and says, I mean, I've been, I'm an angel investor. If they come to me and actually talk to me about, about their startup, my question's all around, okay, tell me who your early adopter is. And you take a step back if there's confusion between an early, major, early majority customer the customer that actually wants your product to work 100% of the time versus their early adopter. Yeah, times. So I, I believe uh, you're going to stick around so you can ask, you know, meet more people afterwards because I'm sure a lot of people will probably want to meet you. That sounds great. I'd be happy to. Yeah, thank you all for today. If you have questions for me, start at techranch.co is the best way to, to, to follow up on all this stuff. Check out one of our events as well. We have a bunch of them and a good number of them are free. We'd love to have you involved in our community. And here's to, you know, the, the challenges you guys are taking on. Thank you. So, this is actually a video I wanted to start, but my computer actually crashed. I got it finally working. So I'll play it, see if it actually works with the volume. There you go. Today I'm here at the co-founder meetup. It's one of those events that we put together, that the TechMap puts together every month here at Austin at Capital Factory and we're actually doing it every second Monday of the month. We created this as a way for networking for other individuals that are looking to pitch their company, they're looking for co-founders, where they can meet and at the same time kind of uh, maybe hire them or maybe co-found a company and start something. I am not only a present and past per, um, presenter here, the bottom line is I started here. I had an idea, I had a PowerPoint, and that was it. That was the best part about the first five minutes of this night for me and for our company four years. But out of that experience, we found our first developer. I think it's it's the best environment out of any other pitch environment that you can try. But I get a lot of feedback. I've used it on, on, on the products I've, I've gotten. I, I've gotten great feedback on, on, on uh, marketing, on technical, on entrepreneurship. Uh, Etc. There are three C's that you need to keep in mind if you are passionate about what you're trying to do. You need to build this company as long as you have two of three things. Cash, customers, or commitment. 
go and pitch. You need to always constantly be uh, pitching your company um, because you never know who you'll meet. They'll be extremely passionate about what you do and like will champion your cause and you know help get you connected. Uh, I'm working on an app myself, so this is actually a platform for me to get used to it and get comfortable so that I can do a pitch here in the near future. So basically that video was done by Alex, so you can see the kind of quality of video. I presented it last time, but we did some modification on it, so hopefully you guys liked it. But that's what we do here, so we're going to have all, uh, all the five presenters come up here and pitch their companies, and hopefully you guys have questions and want to join their startups as well. Uh, first person I want to bring up here will be uh, Smart, no, Pretty Smart Homes. Antonio. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go with that. There you go. Try that. Uh, we'll have to go back because we need to. There you go. And uh, allow. Hmm? How do we allow? You have to allow me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm allowed. Well, thank you. The, uh, okay, this is an app for you, so it doesn't count to get my five minutes. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I presented three times here. The first time, it was just an idea, and it was horrible. I, I mean, I, I got a lot of feedback. Uh, I, I had to take it, but uh, here we are. We, we, we have a, a lamp, uh, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's, it's pretty. It's called a pretty smart lamp because it's pretty pretty smart and it's a lamp. <laughs> uh, it has a beautiful box, uh, packaging, etc. We're delivering after Kickstarter and now you can start counting the five minutes. <laughs> okay, so pretty smart homes, uh, make things smart, make them beautiful. It's about the connected home. So let, let's talk, I, I, I'm, a, I'm passionate about uh, uh, home automation. But this is what typically happens right now. So uh, in my smart home, uh, I arrive in my home and my lights and my, my, my music starts uh, as I program them to you. Uh, as soon as I get into my house, the only problem is that I'm, I'm at the garage and my wife was asleep at the bedroom so, uh, where, where the music started and the lights turned on, etc. So uh, I go to my living room and I drop my smartphone so uh, it starts my disconnection anxiety because, because uh, am I going to miss a, a text message, a call, etc. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's really a problem. You, you have all this technology, but it's not really working uh, as it should. Uh, I have a hard of hearing situation, which it makes it even worse. Am I going to hear the smartphone uh, uh, on? Uh, uh, am I not? Uh, so uh, even with the, uh, a lot of the solutions that are out right, uh, right now, I have to take, uh, okay, I, I, I want to turn off the lights. I, I, I actually have to find my smartphone and turn them on or turn them on uh, when I usually just, uh, before that, just to, to flip a, a switch for on and off. Now I, I have to find the, the smartphone, the app, etc. And uh, when I go to sleep, I have to find the smartphone again just to turn them off. So, so it, it's, it's kind of a nice thing to turn into a nightmare. So uh, we came with a solution that I, 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 uh, I'll show you a video, it talks better about it. It was the Kickstarter video as well. You just tap on it.
Jones. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I said it off. Okay, the problem with technology. I hope that doesn't complicate my five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's a new form of currency, my five minutes. Okay, so we're talking about huge market, uh, 450 billion by two, uh, 2019, 52% uh, of, of annual growth. Uh, uh, smart home energy will make most of the shipments of, of what will happen and it's happening, and two thirds of the consumer are concerned with, with price. Uh, we launched a Kickstarter campaign, we did 300% of what we were looking for, and we almost did no promotion. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, uh, solution, always connected, uh, find your phone, you, you, you do special command on, on, on your lamp by tapping, it, it helps you find your phone, uh, it, it gives you notification, you get a text message, uh, that the lamp will tell you uh, without being too intrusive that, that you have a, a, a message. Uh, the, we, we have uh, some functionality like, like tap your loved ones, uh, which we're lump, uh, launching for, for uh, Valentine. You tap one lamp and another one of, of your uh, loved one, uh, it's uh, working. Uh, and some more functionality that I can tell you a lot about it. Uh, target market, the millennial interest in being connected, saving. The deaf community, of course, uh, for those who can understand this, uh, is coming for Valentine's. Uh, business from desk promotions. Uh, why us? Uh, because a lamp is a great is a great feature to launch all this functionality. Uh, but by tapping, you you can you, you can program it so it, it can turn all of your lights off, not only the lamp but, but everything just by tapping on, on your table. Uh, it's a growing functionality software. Uh, we're focusing on, on pretty smart, uh, so, so we're going to be doing this and, and some more uh, focus on, on, on the pretty smart part. Uh, this is some competition, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, promoters, uh, uh, we'd be, we're, we're all in all tech shop, we were uh, at Vegas in four different booths uh, uh, of uh, them showing our lamp doing something with something else. Uh, uh, with, there's a local startup w which we're working locally in, in order to do more functionality of just what the lamp does. And uh, uh, a lot of lamps out there. So uh, uh, press, etc. cetera. Uh, strong team. Uh, uh, my son who is on the team, he's back there. He, he's doing all, all the uh, assembling, production, logistic, and some other ones. Uh, development, uh, design, etc. We're looking for a, CEO, a CCO and a CFO. Uh, CCO is a new term about uh, the CMO, our thing of the past. Now we want chief customer uh, officers, uh, one who is customer centric. We're looking for that. Networking uh, for business development. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the guys? Or anybody who wants to be a CCO? CCO. CCO. Now CMO. Yeah, no, CMO. Someone comes with a C. I, 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 I'd be a great CMO. Okay, forget it. <laughs> so, question? How what? much is the lamp? Huh? How much it costs? Oh, uh, we, we have a we, uh, website, 80 bucks. All right. <laughs> yeah. No question. Was I too fast? Selling right now in uh, Home Depot yet, or not? Not yet. No, not yet. So, so part of what everything that we've been doing it, it's uh, preparing ourselves for production, uh, learning how to produce this. Because uh, when we go to Home Depot or something like that, we we have to know how to make uh, thousands of it, not just hundreds of it. So, 
So the Kickstarter was great for that, uh, a, a, a way of learning uh, a, a, and making all your supply chain, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, your glitch is back there. Yeah, what's the distance for connectivity? What's the farthest? What, what is the what? The distance of communication, how far can it go? It's a hand of fit, uh, it's Bluetooth, and uh, uh, it, uh, it depends also on how the room is. Uh, so. Uh, open over here clearly a hand of it uh, one of the nice thing about the Bluetooth also is that that it's uh, this has a, a technology that is called a beacon in which it tell you exactly in which room you're at uh, so so another uh, some other applications can decide on being on the room and launch things like music lights etc in the room no we're on a starter right now or no are you running a Kickstarter right now? Uh, no, we already did. We're, we're, we're fulfilling, we're finishing fulfilling right now. And uh, we're preparing a, a social campaign for Valentine's. Uh, one of the nice things about the, the, the lamp is that, that you, you, you can change the, the, the top and, and make any expression that you want. So we'll, we'll, we'll come with some other ones with, with a, a Thinking of you, uh, your name, or whatever for for Valentine. So, any more questions? Are you working to um, integrate? In, I heard like Home Depot, like direct to consumer, or are you working to work with home builders at the integration into when they're actually building? So, home builders will be easier be, be, because you can you can grow with them. Uh, when you when you go to Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, or any of them, you really, really have to be prepared because you're going to be doing thousands of units per month in which all of them have to be totally debugged. I guess the next question is, when am I getting mine? Uh, back there. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and thank you for that, be fat, that feedback. So more than five minutes, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, last question. Oh, oh, no. Okay. No, we're good. Oh, last question. Is there a limit in how many lamps you can connect together? Or they, do they know about each other? Uh, so, well, it's ten lamps, and the limit the, the limit is the the. the Android or, or iOS device itself, uh, uh, how many they can connect at the time. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> and next is going to be Sebastian with chimichurri. Um, that sounds to me like Argentinian steak. <laughs> uh, that's just me. <laughs> and then just Uh, so the bottom one right here. Well, hello everyone. I don't have a lamp, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't have a cow. Uh, my name is Sebastian Broker, and I'm the founder and CEO at uh, Chimichurri. We help non-technical entrepreneurs launch new SaaS and marketplace businesses, as well as other web products. And so, um, thank you, Joanne, for uh, having us here. We're really excited. Um, Here's a team about a week ago, myself here, and uh, Mr. Steve Samuelsberger, a good friend of mine. We've worked uh, many times together in the past, and he's a great advisor to the company. Uh, missing from this slide is uh, Nathan Lowry, our uh, new platform engineer. Uh, he's uh, helping us out on a contracting basis, and we are looking for not a CCO, but a CRO. So that's revenue, you all. Just in case. Um, so, um, if any of you, uh, I'm not looking for a salesman, if any of you are, uh, that are here uh, passionate about entrepreneurship and technology, uh, and you're a hustler, then you can talk to me and uh, help me build this business. Um, so let's talk a little more about uh, what we do. Um, so uh, I believe that uh, today, it still takes too many uh, resources, skills, uh, and time 
to build new web products. Uh, and I believe that's a problem because that's slowing down innovation and entrepreneurship. And so um, our solution uh, to that is a combination of a product building platform, that's Jimmy, uh, that is capable of uh, generating web products, and uh, a professional services team, that's Jewelry, that can be used and leveraged to um, implement custom features and uh, integrations that uh, the unique product may need. Uh, we also have a little bit of our unique agile uh, product building methodology that comes from years and years of building products for different startups. Uh, and um, if you think of uh, companies like uh, Teslio, that's the do it for me uh, for QA, or Bench, that's do it for me for accounting, Jim Churi is do it for me for innovation. So that's a little bit about uh, the trend that uh, the company follows. Um, in the long term, we would uh, love to enter more of the uh, established application platform as a, sec as a service uh, segment uh, where there's players <coughs> like Salesforce and IBM and Zoho and so on. So um, some of the uh, differences between, uh, you can obviously uh, build web products uh, by using a freelancer or a consultant or, or a development agency. Uh, the main differentiations uh, with a Agency is that we are faster and lower cost, yet we keep the same high quality, top notch quality that you would expect from an experienced senior consultant or top notch uh, development agency. Um, but you don't have to find them, so there's no tech skills needed, and you don't have to uh, find those uh, scarce and highly expensive uh, qualified tech resources. And so um, then again, um, other competitors like hosted solutions or uh, rapid application development tools uh, have other, other products. Uh, they, uh, they typically lock you in. So um, in, in, in contrast to them, we don't lock you in. We provide you all of your source code, uh, which is asking to agree to our license, which is very friendly. And so you can continue to develop and iterate your product, or, what, or we can continue to do it uh, for you. And when, once you get a technology team in place, then you can uh, pick up from uh, whatever we left uh, off. So it's a lot more entrepreneur uh, friendly than uh, some of the other solutions over there. All right, so um, out of box, we can build uh, basic SaaS uh, applications, so subscriptions, one-time payments, uh, recurring fees, uh, administrators, a CMS, a website, email marketing, all of these things come already standard, and we can uh, also produce uh, out of the box marketplaces. And in addition to that, we also have some uh, add-ons or topics that are optional that add some other extra functionalities. Uh, right now, we are uh, offering our early adopter program for a fixed price of $2,500. Uh, it comes with everything that you can naturally all read in there. Uh, if you are interested, please contact me or go to chimi.co. Uh, we have a couple of uh, products that we have built already. Mr. Ed De Leon is actually over there. Uh, and so, thank you, because co-founders meet up is working. We actually met here. Um, otherwise, uh, Kevin, also thank you for uh, the TechCrunch. Uh, to anybody that's a member of TechCrunch, uh, we also have discounts uh, for TechCrunch. So, uh, that's because they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any questions? Anybody? Doodler, doodler. Come on, guys, wake up. You guys have some good beer and wine, so I know you're falling asleep, but how's let me turn the ACO. How is this different from the foundation? Uh, I'm sorry, what's the foundation? <laughs> the foundation is a, um, it's a company that helps uh, encourage people to build SaaS companies, um, and it kind of takes you through like the whole process of like, you know, ideation through ex like building and execution and marketing. So I just wasn't sure if it's similar, if you've heard of them, or like how it's different. Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't heard of them. I'll have to look it up. But uh, it does sound like uh, they're maybe more focused about the process and the uh, and, and the business itself, whereas we are more focused about building your technology product. We'll help a little bit uh, throughout the process as well to make sure that you're building a true MVP and you're not like wasting money in, in unnecessary or too early features that you're not sure that you need. Um, but it's, our solution is more aggressive about implementing your product. Built any uh, marketplaces yet? Um, not by leveraging this solution, but in the past I have built marketplaces, so I'm fairly common with the features that are needed for that. Question back there. Why the cow? 
<laughs> Why the guy? Uh, well, the car is Jimmy. It's, it's, I don't have a lamp, so. <laughs> uh, I'm also from Argentina, so I got inspired. Uh, Jimmy Jury means a mix of things, and so uh, this business is a mix of product and service, and that's why Jimmy is the product and Jury is the service. Jimmy is the car, the automatic product building machine. You got, you got a question back there? Yeah. So, so you said it was a fast, high quality, and uh, low cost. So almost everybody else in the world will tell you you have those three things. You have to pick two. So so what's what's your secret? So so, uh, so how are you going to do those three things? Right. And so um, it's, a, it's the productized uh, part that is what enables us to uh, get all those three things at once. Right. Um, and so basically, if you think about it, the the, the piece that's not productized that's a service. Right. question. So um, right now the platform itself is fairly generic um, and it enables us to build a certain kind of product. It is best suited uh, for products that uh, may take a, a subscription or membership. Um, and there's a lot of things that come together with that. Um, but uh, ultimately we would like to have also more of ready app, ready made apps for specific segments, which is how we got there yet. So right now what we have is a platform that lets us build a certain number of different products, um, but we will continue to specialize in some specific areas of interest. I'm, I'm sorry. Meet Jane. Oops, She's sorry. grown. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Do we still have that? No. You could right. take it now. We we can. Not exactly, but we can talk offline on the specific details and how it is implemented, how it works. Yeah, yeah so all the presenters are going to stick around and network with you guys and uh, finish up the food and drinks if we have any left. But other than that, I appreciate Sebastian. Thank you for presenting. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope the next presenter, uh, do you want to start with the video or no? The presentation, please. Presentation. It's right in the middle. Here's the mic. So hello everyone, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, my name is Jeff Miller, I am the, uh, I'm the founder of Lighthouse. And I think Kevin was a, a perfect keynote presentation to lead into what I'm doing. Um, he talked a lot about um, trying to battle and solve the world's problems. And my startup truly is something that's um, aimed to battle the problem that is lack of political engagement in this country. Mike's to up, so. Oh, yeah, sorry, I can hear you. Hope you guys caught that. So what is the problem? So um, first, I'll just start with how the idea came about. I, I read the news every morning. I'm not, I don't consider myself a political um, expert or guru or anything like that, but I do read the news every day. I have opinions about things that I read in the news. And I was kind of struck with the idea that really, there's, there's no way to further my political engagement for, further than just having conversations with my wife over dinner or talking with a couple of friends that I enjoy speaking politics with. And um, it really uh, came to light that uh, it just kind of got me thinking, well, we have all these social media tools, but we don't really, um, th there's really not the right environment for that type of meaningful discussion uh, further than um, what we have today. There are tools like Facebook and Twitter, but um, there, with, with those um, platforms come the issues with, um, there's relationship dynamics that you have to deal with, as well as, um, the, the simple fact that most of the people on Facebook aren't looking for that sort of content on that platform. It's just not the right environment. So, and the other thing is society really needs a catalyst to get people talking about these things. We need to have civil discussion and move away from this polarized state of politics where we can't even talk to one another just because we don't want to offend one, one another even though we're facing all these issues as a society. 
And the idea is that if we actually talk about these problems, we'll move as a society towards something that's more in the middle of where we're trying to do the video. You need the video? Um, yeah, so on the high level, on a high level, we have uh, on, the, on the profile, or on the, on the platform, we have a profile, a conversation, and uh, also a debate feature. And I've got a video that, um, as Alex mentioned, is created. Um, So yeah, Alex created this. Uh, they did a great job. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Microsoft for you guys. It's not Alex's fault. <laughs> I thought I had it. Started before. There we go. Meet Jane. She's grown tired of a news feed filled with cat videos and gym selfies. Jane loves following important issues but she feels awkward sharing with others. Mm. Even if you mean well, post on most social media can cause drama. Grandma, no! <sighs> There's a better way, Jane. <gasps> Who said that? The narrator, and you're in a video for Lighthouse. What's Lighthouse? Glad you asked. <laughs> Welcome to Lighthouse, Whoa. a place to debate and rally around the topics you care about most. Whether it's presidential primaries, political issues, or current events, you can openly discuss topics that matter. How? Well, start by indicating and describing your stances on various issues. These stances are then added to your Lighthouse profile, where others can learn about your opinions and candidates you support. This is the conversation for discovering and sharing meaningful content between followers. There's the petition I shared. That's right. And here's the daily poll, where you can vote on and discuss today's trending issue. What's that? Here you can find debates happening on Lighthouse right now. Wow, looks like thousands of people are following this debate. Debates can be made public or you can keep them private. Can I debate someone? Sure. Either challenge a specific user or let Lighthouse match you up with a random opponent who holds an opposing view. When debating a random opponent, your identities are hidden until after the debate. Debates allow for meaningful discussion. You made some really good points. You too. Which can lead to new perspectives. Yeah. Time's up. Where's Lighthouse? You can download Lighthouse for iOS or Android, or go to lighthouse.club. OK, thanks. Bye. Join the conversation that matters. Lighthouse. Engage. Enlighten, empower. Maybe a round of applause for, for Alex over here. I thought he did a great job. And it's true. So, uh, and this is only the beginning. This is just purely our MVP. We've got lots of features in the works to really further this um, to really where it can be. But I think it's a great start. Um, and more than enough to, to get people talking about things that do matter. Um, and by the way, I forgot to mention at the very beginning, I was a little bit nervous, but uh, today is a big day for Lighthouse. Uh, today is the day that we are officially getting out of our family and friends public beta, or our family and friends beta and moving into our public beta. So if you go to lighthouse.club, it is available today. It's available in Google Play. The video lied a little bit today. It's not quite yet ready in the app store. It will be uh, probably in a couple days, uh, but not right now. Um, so what do I need? Why am I presenting here? The big thing is users. I need people on the platform. A social media site is not very social without users. And I know every single one of you people in this room today, even if you aren't very interested in politics, I know that you know somebody that's on your Facebook newsfeed that maybe you don't like seeing on your Facebook newsfeed talking about those political topics. And there are people that want to talk with them. He just needs to be matched up with the people that do want to talk, talk about these issues. So, um, you know, Lighthouse.club, please download the app when it's in the App Store and right now in Google Play. Um, followers, Twitter at Join Lighthouse and um, on Facebook as well. What I'm looking for, um, like as I mentioned, we're launching today. So um, past today, um, you know, as we grow, we're going to need uh, customer support, um, admin people, uh, content moderators, things like that. Um, so I'm looking for hourly work. Eventually, it's going to be 24/7 work um, that's going to be on a rolling basis. Um, also, eventually, um, I will need technical talent. Right now, I'm working with a development firm. Um, that I've got those bases covered right now, but eventually as we grow, uh, we will bring that in-house. Um, so I'll need people accordingly. 
And also investors, right now I'm good for, uh, for the near term, uh, but here in uh, probably a few weeks, I'll be looking for a little bit more investment. Um, I'm just trying to take um, investment as I need it so that I don't, uh, uh, well anyway, if you're an investor, we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, if you uh, follow in any of these categories and have any questions, please email me uh, at, the email, uh, or at the email there, and uh, I'll open it up to questions. What's the revenue model? Can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, so sure. So, so the question is, what's the revenue model? Uh, fortunately, there's social media sites out there like Facebook that have pretty well proven what I can do from an advertising standpoint, so I will have um, you know, um, information on people that I can use in a... Uh, to, to help give them ads that they might be more interested in on, on based on their stances and their their uh, demographics and things like that so and and we have also um, I'm sorry the uh, the data that we're collecting also of course um, the, as I mentioned at the very beginning we are uh, coming from a social good standpoint as far as what I'm trying to do with the site um, but the data can be used in a socially good and ethical way uh, to solve the world's problems and, and really see so um, elected officials can have real-time insight into how constituents actually feel about these issues in real time with you know items like the daily poll so um, you know there's a lot that can be done there as well how can you prevent your discussion from degenerating into the kind of discussions you see on Facebook <laughs> well um, really I mean first of all you can't ever I mean there's going to be those types of people um, regardless but the thing is um, the way you can you can really tailor your own news feed because it's we follow a Twitter following system. So if, if somebody you know isn't adding, we call the news feed the conversation. So if the, if the user is not adding value to your conversation, you simply unfriend them and you only have the people there that you think are adding value to the conversation. So a lot of the people, there's a lot of people out in the space trying to uh, really, uh, I guess, fill this void that we all know is out there. There's people that want to talk about this that can't. and. Uh, the, the, um, a lot of the people are trying to match up like-minded people. Oh, let's get everybody that thinks the same and, and try to solve those problems from that perspective. Uh, but, but I'm trying to get people together that I have opposing, I want people to learn from each other and really have a, a real discussion. And, and I think, you know, it, it's gonna take some work and some thought, but I think we can do it. I mean, we've got these tools um, and I'm, I'm ready to do it. So I, I, t I, I tend to think you're gonna have the same problem that Craigslist provides to every other company that tried to replace them, right? They're, they're so simple that it just becomes the default thing that everybody uses. I think in your space, Reddit is probably going to be the one that you're going to have to displace. How, are you, how in the world are you going to do that? So the thing with Reddit is that the thing that makes us different is that people don't care about political views of people that don't, they don't know. They don't care what Jack White 238 thinks about Syrian refugees. But if one of my old teachers or one of my old professors and one of my best friends or my family members, if they have a stance on that, all of a sudden I respect that person and I wanna, I'm really interested in what they think. So that's really the social, social part of it, of what we're trying to accomplish here um, from you know, just teaching. And I, 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 a lot of people don't like politics, right? And they say, oh, I don't wanna touch politics, that's not my interest. But I really, truly, firmly believe, and I, and I don't think I'll ever not believe, that if people are, are um, I'm looking for the word, if they're exposed to politics, and uh, not necessarily like politics in a sense, just like our, our problems and, and what the right solution are to those problems. I think if people are exposed to it, I think enough, at that point you become interested into it, and I think there's gonna be enough people, um, you know, on a friends basis that there's gonna be enough people um, in your network that can get on. But fortunately, um, through our um, a debating feature and everything like that, and our public feeds, um, you know, it, it's very intricate what we're doing, but if you get onto those things, there's a lot of way to, uh, ways to be exposed to other users so you can be connected in that way as well. So we have kind of a hybrid between the two models. Okay. Yeah, he'll be around to more questions than on time. So thank you. I would say... Um, one of the things I would say, I stay away from talking to my friends about politics, church, or religion, and other stuff. So I don't know if I want to have a conversation on that, but I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, Kevin, Harney. Hi, my name is Kevin Carney. And I teach small businesses and early stage startups how to generate leads for their business through a process called inbound marketing. 
Inbound marketing is the process of attracting visitors to your website primarily through organic search and converting website visitors into leads. I'm looking for a developer to join me in my venture to implement the methodology I teach in a software tool that will both reduce the learning curve as well as reduce the amount of time and energy that's needed on a day-to-day -day basis to make it work. The problem I'm addressing is the growing digital marketing divide that's being created by the fact that being found online is a very content-centric activity these days. You have to generate a fair amount of content on a fairly regular schedule to make this work, and that's not inexpensive. So big brands with big budgets can take advantage of the power of this tool, and small businesses on limited budgets are being left behind. Apparently I'm talking out of my slides. And for the same reason that the cost of inbound marketing is increasing, what used to be called small business SEO packages have become ineffective. The solution is really nothing more than a better, cheaper software tool. And here's a list of the capabilities that that tool needs to provide. And this works. There's actually two members of my pilot community in the audience tonight, and I'm going to call on them. So Brett is with Revolve Solar. And Brett told me eight or nine weeks ago that currently his cheapest source of closed business are the leads that he generates through the inbound marketing activities which I taught him. So is that still the case? Yeah, absolutely. And Golden Arm Media is also in my pilot community. Sarah was going to be here, but Alex is representing her because she's sick. So Sarah told me that she wants this tool because it will make her life easier. Absolutely. It would help in many areas of our digital marketing. So don't take my word for it. This works. So if you have a startup and you need more visibility, more leads, and more business, you should join us as well, and I'll teach you how to do this. The initial iteration of the client software will be a WordPress plugin because WordPress has market share. In phase two, there will be a marketplace of services that small businesses need to be successful with inbound marketing. Now, this is a chart from Forrester Research showing US companies spending on interactive marketing. I'm not interested in the entire market. I'm interested in this slice here called search marketing, which all by itself is almost 60% of the total market um, and is a $32 billion um, dollar spend in the US alone. There are competitors. I am not first to market. HubSpot is the $800 a month gorilla in this space. Um, they are a well-funded, publicly traded company with almost $2 billion in market capitalization. And in terms of the commercialization of WordPress plugins, Yoast is the big player in WordPress SEO. They have a freemium model. They're a 20-person company based in the Netherlands. Because they're private, I don't have access to their financials. So this market is validated. However, if you're a small business looking to do inbound marketing, you're going to consider us in competition with SEO agencies and consultants. They will do it on an outsourced basis. We will save you thousands a month by teaching you how to manage the process yourself. However, most small business owners I talk to know they can't afford to outsource it, and they believe it's too complex for them to manage the process themselves, so they do nothing. The business model, monthly subscriptions. If the average subscription is $90 a month, considering that there are almost 28 million small businesses in the US alone, when we sign up one in 10,000 of them, which is a market penetration of 0.01%, we have a $3 million a year business. And now is the time to do it. There are 41,000 plus plugins in the WordPress plugin repository, and not a single one of them addresses helping you with your content marketing or inbound marketing. And of course, after phase two, we'll get commissions on transactions in the marketplace. So here's the opportunity. Almost 28 million small businesses in America. When we achieve a market penetration of 0.01%, we have a successful business. But a great tool will far exceed that. And bear in mind that when Facebook started, they were not the first social networking site. And they were, in fact, entering a fairly crowded space. But what they brought to that space was a better tool. 
So if you are a developer looking for an opportunity or you know a developer looking for an opportunity, I would like to talk to you. Thank you. Any questions? Got one back here. Yeah, Kevin, actually it was just more of a comment um, around the, I know it's a very quick presentation, but it's a community aspect, I think, mm -hmm. is something that perhaps you don't really have a lot of time to go over, but I found it particularly beneficial um, and that's something that, you know, as it grows and you get more people in that community, that's going to be uh, fantastic. Can you repeat what you, he said? So people yeah, Brad was making the point that the community aspect of small business inbound marketing is really important to the success of it. Now, I only have five minutes, so I had to, like, really strip this down. But that's a valid point. A, a big part of the success is coaching. I would call it inbound marketing coaching. Uh, to a certain extent, you would call it marketing coaching. But without that, the small business owners are kind of like not sure what to do and how to do it. So that's a very important component, and that's a part of the current offering, which is done without the tool and will be incorporated in the tool. Any more questions? How big do you think the revenue stream is on the other side of the market? So taking the uh, commission on the transactions in your market. That's an excellent question, and I wish I would have like cut out a calculator and figured it out, right? Um, I suspect the most transacted service will be writing, but the way I do it, I teach people how to find and manage writers in less expensive parts of the world. And um, basically it works. I've done this for dozens of companies, and I've taught dozens of companies to do this. So the amount of money that we'll make on a single article is slight, because we're paying like six bucks for an article. We might make, you know, 50 cents maybe, right? But, you know, Again, I didn't do the math, but over time, it, it, it stands to be substantial, but I don't know how much. Last question. There are some similarities to my tool and HubSpot. HubSpot is by no means a bad tool. HubSpot is a very expensive tool. And there are some things that HubSpot does very poorly. Uh, HubSpot's great strength is the integrated analytics. You can get a lot of information about what's going on. But in terms of, of helping you, You've got to be a fairly sizable company in order to be able to afford the HubSpot monthly subscription. And most of the small businesses I've spoken with, that's just out of the question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess, <laughs> sorry about that. Let me bring this the next slide up. So, Nomad, and uh, you come up. <coughs> we usually do a drawing at the end, guys, but uh, I don't know if we're going to have time. Unless you really want to, we can collect some business cards and we'll do a drawing of a shirt or hat. But uh, right now, we'll have no man to start. Right. So, for the better part of this evening, I didn't actually contact Johan because I was considering just walking out. So this is actually the first time that I've, I've shared uh, my idea at Capital Factory. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm passionate about this company and I'm excited to share it with you. So do we have to stand on a platform? We know, right? All right, good. I like to walk around. So start off, Nomad is, Nomad is the culmination of consistently spending time with a number of incredible people. Uh, oh, bottom one. So for the better part of five years, I've been a, a veteran in the United States Army. Um, and I've consistently worked with incredible men and women who are better than me at everything that they do, right? So as an infantry officer, you are thrust into leadership. You are you're put into a leadership position where you are expected to lead a room this size of men and women. And you're supposed to be able to tell them, hey, you go do this. And often you get the, the answer, hey, I, I already did that, sir. I'm like, oh, okay, good job. 
Like, way to go. Okay, on to the next problem. Well, for the better part of that time, the way that you earn your keep is by spending time at work for 40 to 60 hours a week. And like many of the people in this room, during that time, you are consistently pouring into people and you, 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 all of your energy is going into that, right? Well, six months ago, uh, I had two weeks of leave off. So I had just gotten back from a deployment. I decided that, hey, I need to get, take some rest, right? So during that time, I started planning, planning a vacation. And what I would do is I would go to these three guys. Their, their names were Hunter, Jeff, and, uh, and Corey. And they would post these incredible photos on Instagram, right? So I started, I started developing uh, my, my trip. I started writing down destination after destination after destination. I'd be like, this is where I really, really want to go, right? So as I start collecting all these times, or all these places that I really wanted to go, um, it, it didn't translate. What happened is I ran into this problem. So I had this list of all these, these places that I want to go that I collected off of Instagram, right? And what would happen is that none of that, that information translated to current online travel agencies. What I would do is I would end up spending months, hours, weeks, planning out these vacations. And then what I ended up doing is a lot of people frantically purchase a ticket at the very end, right? They're like, oh, I'm going to, and then they spend $500 on a on plane ticket. I ended up just going. I ended up going to Yosemite, and I got to see the se sequoia trees, and I got to see this incredible, this incredible view at Big Sur. I got to see these whales that were spraying out this mist, and I was like, I really want to see that. I came back, and it was the most restful time that I've ever experienced in my life. And I, I wanted, I, I love the feeling of enabling people to do something, so I wanted to do something about it. Um, so I came up with Nomad. Nomad is a mobile-based platform that streamlines desired content from photo sharing platforms to an organized queue. It provides a traditional ticket referral medium, but delivers destination-specific options through data aggregation and analysis. What Nomad does is it creates a commodity out of time spent on Instagram, it creates a commodity out of the time that you spend on Pinterest. You know the time that you take 10 minutes off at work? Your mic break. Oh. You know the 10 minutes that you take off at work and, and you start vegging out and you, you look at Instagram photos? Every time you collect one of the, or every time you tap one of those photos, Nomad will collect it. And as it collects it, it starts organizing it. And as it organizes it, it starts developing potential places that you can travel to. It takes a geotag destination specific photo, it creates a travel queue, and then when you're ready to travel, it provides a ticket referral method to get there. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm giving you a way to plan a trip without putting any effort into it. Right now, everybody goes to Google. Right now, you, you find out where your friends are going. You already go to Instagram to figure out where you want to go, right? I talk to my friends, I try to identify where I want to go, and I assess all the options, and then I make a decision, but often it's too late. What the exciting thing is, is that this idea came into fruition back in August, right? Well, since then, uh, this is the team that I put together. Uh, James Davis, who is a successful uh, retired lieutenant colonel in the Army who uh, exited as a CTO for a, a company in Baton Rouge. He's a professor at LSU. Uh, another guy who is a, his name is John Hauser. Uh, he's a self-taught developer, has his PhD in physics, right? <laughs> like, who are those guys? Um, and I just consistently after pursuing people to, to, and pitching this to people and the passion behind it and the opportunity and the value behind it to go to a potential place and share that with people and experience something that you've always wanted to do. Well, something else that's kind of crazy is this guy right here, John Cogbill. That's my, that's my former boss's boss's boss. And he, I talked to him the other day and he's like, Jim, I want to be on your team. He wants to help me out. 
He's about to take a very, very important role in the military. He's about to be a general. Um, other than that, actually just hired a guy today. His name is Hunter Lawrence. And the way that we're going to roll this out is using Instagram. Uh, he's a guy that has a little over 400,000 followers on Instagram. And when the MVP is ready to go, we're going to start marketing on that. He's the guy who's going to own branding and then present the product. So all in all, we're seeking to modernize travel in the way that online travel agencies operate. And we're going to try to take on companies like TripAdvisor and Kayak. So thank you. Questions? That's a good question. So what he asks is, can we essentially filter the options by cost and by? Or suggest trips. And suggest trips, yeah. So what what we want to do is, the goal of what I'm trying to do is identify where places, places where people want to go. But it's too easy for me to be able to suggest where people want to go. That's what TripAdvisor and Kayak and Expedia do. I, Often you get inundated and paralyzed by that information. Like they're just throwing stuff at you like, whoa, ball out of the left part, right? And it comes at you, you don't know, I don't want to go to San Francisco. I want to go to Colorado. My goal is to identify what you like on Instagram and present a way for you to get there. Is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, what if I have multiple destinations? Yeah, so we would create multiple. So what we're going to do is organize those photos into potential trips and create a queue of an organized travel list so that when you, and you can filter that by cost, proximity, ta uh, by tags, user, what have you, even by weather conditions. You can take historical weather data and you can apply that determining when the best time to travel to a place like that is. So you hit a button and then it brings the, the best trip to the top. It's like, hey, this is the best time to go. Yeah. Sir? Question. Yeah. First of all, in your presentation, you neglected to tell us what you do. That's a good question. Okay. So, um, three months ago, it would have been much different as I was looking for a team. Uh, I was looking for somebody who was intelligent, who was had the attitude, who who wanted to to start a comp start a company with somebody, and people just kind of like uh, like I just found myself with this random team. Now, not a, uh, sorry, correction, not a random team, a team of people who are passionate about what they do, have succeeded in, in, in past jobs and want to pursue this with me. What I want to do, what I need is we're going to start series, or we're going to start seed funding. And I need, to, I, need to raise enough, I need to raise enough capital to bring three people on full time. Um, is that, does it, yeah, then, well, so. the second question is, where are you on the app at this point in time? So right now we're projected in, within, the 30 day, it, within 30 days to launch a low fidelity MVP. We, um, we currently have the entire app. While I was looking for a team, I was mapping out the entire product. And now they're like, hey, we know what we need to build. And then it's, it's on its way. So um, as I expect in 30 days. So, like traditional ticket referral uh, programs, you you refer a ticket, you make eighteen cents on a dollar. So, very similar to Kayak or Expedia. Yeah. Um, are you mostly focusing on like like airplane tickets and stuff, or are you also going to be adding in like hotels or like Airbnb? Yeah. Or yeah. Boom. Like Come on. Well, as many of you know, Home Away is actually located in Austin. Uh, there's another company called Hip Camp out of San Francisco that I'm a friend with. One of the guys who works there. Um, and yes, what if, what if we could identify who would want to go on a trip and then nobody wants to take a Mazda 2 up a mountain in Colorado, right? Like you want to take a Suburban or, or something that, that helps you get there. So yes, we, we are going to pursue that, that vertical for revenue. One last question. How do you go about uh, creating the travel plan for those individual trips? Uh, could you elaborate a little bit? 
So are you going to have a team of people who are going to actually uh, look at the places people want to go and craft a travel plan like a traditional travel agent? That's a good question. Okay. So on GitHub, there is already an API, or there's an, um, I believe it's an, I might be speaking, I might bug you, I don't know. Um, there's an API that John tells me that they have al they've already did there's a program that they can apply to it that will organize the photos into these potential travel plans. Now, within that, what we can do is start identifying, hey, you can go to these three on this day, you can go to these three on this day, and you can go to these three on this day. Uh, is that answering your question? No, my question was more around, let's say you've already identified where you want to go. Yeah. And the problem that I have today is I have to go on, on Travelocity, Orbitz, Cheapo yeah. Air, and all these places and try to find out the cheapest ticket. I also have the problem that I probably want to have multi-destination travel, yeah. and I struggle with it. I spend almost an hour just trying to find out the best deal. Yeah. How are you going to solve that problem? So right now we tie into, so Priceline has an API that connects you with the destination that you're going to. Um, you fly into that destination now. We're not going to focus on, hey, do you want to fly to San Francisco, <laughs> and then you want to go to Oregon, and then you want to go to Colorado. We're just going to go send you there, and then send you back. That is a, a future. Uh, position I see that we could do, but uh, I see us sending somebody to, if you're going to Yosemite, send them to San Francisco, and then tell them how to get to these photographs that are geotagged, and then tell them how to get back and want to fly back. So, yes, we want to do a, tradi a traditional ticket referral, but it's driven through uh, Instagram photos. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So at this point, guys, it's uh, 8.37. I'm going to basically turn some music on. Please uh, make sure you pick up after yourself and throw the trash. And this is time to network until 9 o'clock, and I'll let you guys know. Thank you for coming again. Can I make one? I, I forgot to mention, too, I have some, if anybody's interested in what I'm doing, and uh, I've got some shirts that I brought along. So if, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, meet me up at the front. <laughs>